Hi, in this video, we shall be discussing one of the calculus topic with regards to integration of trigonometric functions as well as the integrations of the form 1 over x and 1 over ax plus b. The question goes, integrate each of the following with respect to x in part a, 1 over 3 tangent square, 2 over 5x, and that's a 2 marks question, and in part b, 2 minus 3x divided by 5 minus 3x, and that is a 3 marks question. Now, you might want to pause this video to give this question a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. Let us begin these questions. In this case, the question gives us an integration which has a tangent square. So before we do any integration here, we might want to convert out this tangent square. Tangent square is part of this formula known as the Pythagorean trigo identities, and there are three of them. So we might want to use one of them which involve a tangent square. Basically, a secant square theta is the same as one plus tangent square theta. So over here, what we want to be doing is to change out the tangent square, convert it to secant square, and then we do an integration. That would be so much easier. So in order to do our integrations, we need to revise on our integration of trigo functions. So integration of trigo functions will be pertaining to this formula particular, whereby we integrate secant square because after we change from tangent square to secant square, we can then integrate a secant square ax plus b dx shall give us a 1 over a tangent ax plus b close bracket plus c. So first thing, the plus c refers to the arbitrary constant. It must be there. Filling to include this plus c will be mathematically incorrect. Second thing, integrate a secant square of the angle ax plus b shall give us a tangent of the same angle. So integrate secant square of this angle shall give us a result of tangent of the same angle. Next, because the angle involves an ax plus b, and we, because we are integrating with respect to x, so it is a must to do a differentiation of the angle of ax plus b, which will give us an a. And what happens is that we multiply by 1 over a to the integral result that we got earlier. In other words, integrate secant square ax plus b shall give us tangent of the same angle divided by the differentiation results of the angle, which is an a. And of course, not forgetting to, forgetting to include the plus c, which includes the which, which um, refers to the arbitrary constant in this case. So once we have the integration of trigonometric function, now since we are dealing with integrations, so we want we might want to revise on the integration of power functions. By the integration of power functions, we are referring to this formula, whereby we integrate x to the power of n dx shall give us x to the power of n plus 1, so the power plus 1, as you can see, power of n plus 1s divided by this new power of n plus 1s. Same thing, we're going to do a plus c, where c refers to the arbitrary constants. So now we have these three formulas in place, we can then start our solving for part a. So in part a, we are told to integrate 1 over 3 tangent square 2 over 5 x dx. So first thing, convert this tangent square using this Pythagorean trigo identities into a secant square, we shall be having this answer. So tangent square, if you, do, if you are to make this a subject, will give us the same as secant square minus 1, if you shift this to the left. So secant square minus 1, like this. So the next step involves splitting out the integral functions, whereby we use the subtraction rule of integration so over here, 1 over 3 secant square 2 over, 5, 2 over 5 x like this. That's one integral function. The 1 over 3 times the minus 1 shall give us a minus away integration of 1 over 3 dx. Now this is referring to the subtraction rule of integrations. Once we have this, we can then proceed to our integration of trigo functions. So first thing first, we want to integrate a secant square. So Integrate secant square shall give us tangent of the same angle. So integrate secant square shall give us tangent of the same angle like this. Tangent of the same angle divided by the differentiation results of the original angle. Divided by the, in the differentiation result of the original angle, which in this case will be divided by 2 over 5. 
The one third shall remain because that is a scalar multiplication. This is just a constant. Next, we can then proceed to integrating a constant of 1 over 3. So minus away integration of 1 over 3 shall give us minus away 1 over 3 x to the power of 0, that refers to the constant. So 0 plus 1 is a new power divided by the new power of 0 plus 1 plus c. So after which we can use our, use our calculator and key the whole thing out. Simplifying all this shall give us this answer. So 1 over 3 divided by 2 over 5 shall give us 5 over 6. Tangent remains minus away 1 third x. So x to the power of 1 like this plus c where c is once again the arbitrary constant. Now there's a shortcut we can take later on whereby if we minus away integration of a constant it shall give us minus away the one third the constant times the x like this. So minus away integration of a constant shall give us minus away constant times x. This is the shortcut we are going to use this later on in part b. So that's the answer for part a. Now let us begin our part b solution. Before we do that we want to revise on the formulas pertaining to a fractions like this with regards to both the derivative as well as the integration. So first thing first, let me scroll this up. Over here, we're going to have the derivatives of log functions like this. So by derivatives of log function, we're referring to this formula whereby we differentiate ln of ax plus b shall give us a over ax plus b. So what happens is that the ln of ax plus b, we copy down the ax plus b, the term inside the long function, copy down the ax plus b into the denominator and we differentiate the ax plus b, all right, differentiate the ax plus b, which is the a, and we write it in the numerator. So by differentiating ln of ax plus b with respect to x, first thing, we copy down the term within the long functions as the denominator, and we differentiate the term within a long function, in this case an a, we write it as a numerator like this. We write it as a numerator like this. So this is the derivative of logarithmic functions. Now, since the integration is the reverse of differentiations, we can therefore infer from the previous formula, integrating this part with respect to x should give us ax plus b, ln of ax plus b plus c. So integrating the right side, dx, should give us the left side, ln of ax plus b plus c where c is once again the uh, arbitrary constant. At the same time, because this, this differentiation and integration involve a ln, and ln with ln there are conditions to include. So ax plus b must be more than 0, must be greater than 0 because ax plus b is actually the asymptote. All right. So ax plus b is more than 0, where a and b are constants, and c is once again the arbitrary constant as mentioned earlier in the previous formulas. So once we have this in place, we can then start to integrate the uh, part B questions. So the question we have it here, integrates 2 minus 3x divided by 5 minus 3x, the whole fraction dx. So as you can see here, this is not a proper fraction because by this, by, by that I mean that this is an improper fraction because this is of x to the power of 1 and this is x to the power of 1. For this whole thing to work, all right, we need to have to change it into a proper fraction whereby the power, the, the, the numerator here must be one power lesser than the power in the denominator. So by that, we need to change an improper fraction into a proper fraction. By changing, we can either do it by the um, long division method or synthetic division, or in this case, I'm going to use an alternative way, which is so much faster than any of those. So over here, since I know that my denominator is a 5 minus 3x, I shall copy the 5 minus 3x on the top like this. And then we ask ourselves, how do we make the numerator to be the exact same thing? So over here, I have a 5 minus 3x. I need to minus by a certain number here so that I have the same numerator. So over here, as you can see here, my 5, how do I convert to a 2? Is basically I must minus away the extra 3. At the same time, the minus 3x remain because there's nothing to change because it's exactly the same thing. So as you can see here, I'm not doing any integration. 
I'm actually converting an improper algebraic fractions into a proper algebraic fractions as shown here. The denominator remains the same. For the numerator, it will be 5 minus 3x minus 3. So 5 minus 3 is a 2. Minus 3x remains. As you can see, the numerator is the same. It's just that I'm writing in a form whereby I use the denominator to write it backwards. So over here, we can then proceed to the next step. As you can see here, the 5 minus 3x divided by 5 minus 3x is actually a 1. So we get a 1 out. So what's left inside is the minus 3. So I'll put in the minus 3 like this. Now, this is considered a proper algebraic fraction because the power on top is 1 less than the power below. All right. And in this case, the original question is not considered a proper one. So this is the process of conversion. We either use this or use the long division methods. So once we have this, we can then start to do our integrations using this formula on the left hand side. So now let's proceed to the next part over here. So using the addition rule, of the integration, we can split this uh, proper fractions into two parts. So integrate 1 dx plus the integration of this part dx. So after which we can do the integration. Now as you can see here, integrate 1 will give us an x result. As shown earlier, all right, integrate a constant, in this case integrate a constant, shall give us the constant times x. So in this case over here, integrates a 1 which is the constant shall give us an x and integrate this part so integrating this part is pretty straightforward as you can see here if we are to integrate an a over ax plus b like this whereby the numerator is the differentiation result of the denominator we shall have it as a ln. so the numerator is a differentiation result of the denominator. So for the denominator, it's a 5 minus 3x. If you have to differentiate 5 minus 3x, it should actually give us a negative 3 like this. So the top is the differentiation result of the bottom. We can therefore write it as a ln brackets 5 minus 3x plus c. So once again, for this kind of question, we are required to write the conditions within a ln uh, function. In this case, the, the term within a ln function, we have a 5 minus 3x. So 5 minus 3x must be greater than 0. At the same time, the C applies to an arbitrary constant. And that's the answer for this whole question.